Super Fun Stuff! Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. It's been a little while since I last made a video, and this is because I've been working on a new project. If you've seen my channel, you know that I love 3D printing and miniature games, and it's always great to combine those interests. So what I'm working on is making my own miniature game. Let me give you a few details. This game is a miniature war game that involves giant animal mechs called Animus Engines that exist in a future world of evolved animal species. The game mechanics utilize a very randomized system, where your dice rolls and random draw make huge decisions in the game. The minis use magnets to allow interchanging of parts to show destroyed parts in the game. The game also has a lot of pop culture references, movies, internet, games, etc. Lots of things that I love and think are fun. I've been making models non-stop for this game. I've been fairly efficient in making them though. I have two full mechs and over 30 unique parts and weapons. I've designed a set of tokens and counters as well to help with the game. To make sure that everything works, I've created prototypes of everything I've modeled and gone through a ton of resin already. Printing, printing, printing. What makes it so much fun to make is making weapons that are both fun, dangerous, and silly. This game can give your mech an amazing killing weapon or a stupid non-helpful piece of equipment. It's been great making silly things like this. For example, I have a giant lollipop, gatling guns, rocket backpacks, guitars, and cool drones. Not only was I designing the models, I've also was creating all the rules. I have 20 pages of rules detailing everything about the game. I also have two pages of weapons and equipment. It's a skirmish type game that anyone can play and have fun. I made some fun game types, like Walk the Pickle, where you have to grab a pickle and walk with certain distance. And yes, I even created some pickle markers. There's a lot of token drawing, dice rolling, measure tape use, and terrain. I've play tested the game a bit, and it's been great so far. I definitely need to do more, but it will be to refine the rules quite a bit. And the lore has been fun to write as well. It's ridiculous. So the plan with this game is to finish it up sometime this year. I'm in the process of making an LLC, registering copyrights, getting trademarks, and deciding how to distribute this thing. Should I keep it a 3D printed only game, or should I actually make a box game? I don't know. What do you think? This is the first time I've done this in a very serious manner, so there's a lot of decisions and things to think about. And this is the first time I've shared it with anyone. That's a game in a nutshell, obviously at a very high level. So let's go into the painting modeling portion of this video. I plan to do a two part video just because it's a lot of stuff to cover. So over the course of creating these models, I continue to refine the design. This mech, which I call Catnip, is a large cat animus engine that is the first one I created. I actually painted this guy a while back using the original prototype. Since then, I've redesigned certain sections to work with the game rules better. I still like the older model, and it probably could still work in the game, but let's make a new one. We are going to try a lot of new things in these videos. For part one, we will look at sculpting. I've been watching a ton of different types of miniature videos, and I've learned quite a bit. We will work on creating weld lines, metal textures, and damage like bullet holes. For these, I learned a lot from model tank videos, specifically the videos created by Night Shift. He does a great job describing in detail how to make realistic tanks using a ton of awesome techniques. You should definitely check them out. For this, you'll need plastic putty, epoxy putty, and a lot of patience. But it turns out great, and it's pretty easy to do. So let's begin and first look at the model. Here we have Catnip printed out on my Anycubic Photon, and he's ready for paint. I utilize 3x6 millimeter magnets on all the parts. You can see everything printed out pretty good. I split some of the larger sections due to the size and to help preserve the details. Adding supports to the models can take away details in certain spots, and this separation allows you to keep everything looking good. So we have our model, and the first thing we do is create a metal texture. If you looked at metal that has been cold rolled, like tanks, it has a slightly bumpy, smooth surface to it. For a scaled model, we need to try to represent that small deviations, but it's super simple. We take some plastic putty, it really doesn't matter what kind, I'm using Vallejo for instance, you take the plastic putty and water it down. You want to make it thin like a paint consistency. Then you simply just brush it on the surface and let it dry. This stuff is a little weird as it doesn't dry super rock hard, but it's almost like a semi-flexible type finish. But when it dries, it gives us small little bumps. You may not notice them as much now, but when we do the washers and filtering effects, they really come out. And if you overdo an area, you can always sand it a bit, or just use an X-Acto knife to remove any sections. Now let's do some welding. It kind of depends on the model if you need this, but on tanks, there are obvious weld marks between metal panels. For this, we focus on the standard weld marks that have the C-like shape. 
I use a small amount of milliput and fill in small gaps where I think the welds should exist. Then I take my X-Acto knife and make little tick marks everywhere. There are other tools too that can give you that shape as well. At the end I use a little curved wire to give a little C-shapes here and there. The important part is to get that little ridges. This again is pretty easy to do. You just gotta make sure you don't make it too thick and you take your time to make those little tick marks. And before we paint, we add some damage. Bullet holes are pretty fun to make. I take my twist drill and add several large holes in certain areas. When something is hit by a bullet, usually there's some shrapnel from the shot. So using a smaller drill bits, I make a variety of smaller holes all around the bullet impact part. It's pretty randomized and you can scatter pretty far out. Now a hole looks just okay, but when a bullet impacts, metal that was there gets kind of spread out and comes out a little bit. So next, we fill the hole with milliput. You take a toothpick and make a hole with the milliput where the bullet was going to go hit. This pushes out the milliput and gives that little destroyed metal look. If you do too much, you can always remove some of the putty. Also, a pro tip, wet your toothpick before spreading the putty. It sticks way less to the little toothpick. Now all three of these things are pretty easy to do, but I suggest you always take your time because it's a lot of detailed work. It's not hard work, but you want to look nice. And that's it for part one. For part two, we venture into the world of oil paints. We will use an oil wash, also called a gunk wash, and use oil paints to give highlights and various awesome hues to our model. We even use a dot filtering technique that gives some awesome hues and colors to break up the mundane colors. We also will add some rust to the model and some other weathering pigments as well. And the last thing in part two, which is the coolest slash scariest thing to do, is to add graffiti to it. And maybe before we finish part two, I'll show you a bunch of other stuff I created for the game. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something in the process. Make sure to check out those Night Shift videos too, he does great work. Thank you to all my patrons and supporters and thank you for watching.